Um, all right, well, I think the first thing we're going to start with is the location. So where is Fort Belvoir located? Do we have a... All right, so just so you know, if you're PCS to Fort Belvoir, it's really part of like the greater DC metro area when you're thinking about where you're going to be living. So you can see it on the map. It's located here in Northern Virginia. Um, so the DC metro area consists of uh, Northern Virginia, DC, and Maryland. So Fort Belvoir is located within Northern Virginia, Fairfax County to be specific. And it is in the, I guess, the south eastern part of Fairfax County. It's as far south outside of Lorton, which you'll see on the map um, to the left. It's as far south as you can get within Fairfax County. What's nice about the Fort Belvoir location is we have some clients who are PCS into Fort Belvoir and this may be their last their last stop on their military uh, career mm -hmm. and some people try to either get a, a, a northern virginia base because we have access to so many government contractors where you all go and make some serious money if you think about uh, converting your your institutional knowledge into to more income so so this is Northern Virginia. Um, this is a Fort Belvoir, like personal mentioned, to the south in the Fairfax County area. We have Washington, D.C. right up here. We have the Pentagon right below Washington, D.C. in the Arlington area. We also have a place called Tyson's Corner. So there, there's so many places, or Tyson's, uh, there's so many places in the, this uh, region for individuals who are, are maybe relocating here as their their next to last stop or their last stop and then thinking about going into the government contract um business. Absolutely. And Northern Virginia itself is huge. So Fairfax County is just one part of Northern Virginia. Um, Northern Virginia is made up of Arlington, which is where the Pentagon is based, as, as well as we have the city of Alexandria, uh, Fairfax, Loudoun County, Prince William County, as well as some smaller cities that are included, uh, which would be like Falls Church City, Fairfax, Manassas Park and also Manassas City. So we have a very large area. And what we're going to try to do in this video is show you some of the closest and most likely places uh, because you have a huge area open to you when you PCS the Fort Bell as far as where you may consider living. We're going to show you the places with the shortest commute time, which is going to make it easier for you to get around and to Fort Belvoir because traffic is a huge consideration when relocated to Northern Virginia. As Abraham said, we have a lot of huge employment hubs in the area. And because of that, traffic can be quite hectic and that's seven days a week and so in this video we're going to show you some of the areas you may want to consider when PCS in the Fort Belvoir. One thing I will say though is uh, in um, I guess before the pandemic or uh, coronavirus mm -hmm. or this, this event that's happening what used to happen was you used to do a, what's called a buying trip right? and this is where you would come down for you know a weekend or a week? Yeah, a weekend. We would show you several properties and you'd buy one, right? You'd put one in the contract and mm -hmm. you'd go back home to wherever your home is, pack up your house, and then once you got here, your house would be ready for you. Right now, inventory is so low right now that buying trips are not really wise because we may not have anything to show you when you come into the area. Now, you could do a buying trip to kind of learn the neighborhoods. And we're doing, on our part, we're trying to do a better job of kind of doing deep dives into neighborhoods so that we can make the buying trip experience for you, the neighborhood experience for you, immersive enough that you don't necessarily have to come here because it is almost a waste of time. Whereas in the old days, we used to be able to show you three, three, three or five houses at least in your budget. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, inventory is just so low that we may be able to show you one uh, property well, it's not just that the inventory is low. It's also that demand is high. So it's not that there is necessarily a lack of properties to show you so much as in the past, you could come see a house, place an offer. You put a solid offer in that offer would be accepted. That is not really the case right now. You could see a house fall in love, even put in a strong offer. But there are so many buyers out putting in strong offers waiving all types of contingencies that it may take you several offers 
for you to find a home or for you to get a ratified contract. So it's not as simple as coming down one weekend, seeing a house, falling in love with it and putting an offer in. Um, because truth be told, even for local buyers, you may be going out for a month two months, maybe three months. And so that's why we're not necessarily advising buyer trips to find specific properties right now. So right now it's more of a find, uh, maybe come down to do a buyer trip and get the lay of the land. Maybe figure out which of the areas is gonna work best for you, drive around and see what traffic is really like in the area, because maybe that'll help you make a decision as far as how far you wanna live away from base. That's true, that's just I'd also add that because uh, so 20% so of our market is uh, military buyers. So every year, really 17 to 20% of all transactions are military buyers. Now, those transactions are usually in the close to our median sales price range for the, the region because of obvious reasons. Uh, first of all, most military buyers are not able to go into the extremely higher uh, prices uh, of the properties. Yes, maybe we have somebody who is a retired military, they went to government contract and now they make a lot more money and so they, they can get into that million plus uh, range. But most of the time we're seeing military buyers buying anywhere from the fours to the eights on the, on the high, right? mm -hmm. low eights on the high. Because of that, sometimes we see military buyers either using, uh, most of them are using VA financing and most of them are using a lower down payment of the model. This strategy makes it a little bit more challenging too in the market where there's a lot more demand because the buyers that you're competing against are using conventional financing, larger down payments. They can waive appraisals, whereas on the, on the VA loan, you can't waive the appraisal. There's a whole addendum. Yes, there's a way to get around the, the appraisal, but it is a, uh, black hat matter of doing business right and so so you are using a product that that is less widely known uh in the area yes we do have a lot of military buyers but only one fifth of our transactions are those individuals so you just have to deal with those competing factors when moving uh, to the northern Virginia area mm -hmm. which again that that's why it makes doing we would like you to restructure or reshape the way you think a buying trip is uh, or what's going to happen with a buying trip. A buying trip now is really going to be where you hone in or, or, or develop an interest for a couple of neighborhoods, a couple of communities, a couple of regions of the Northern Virginia area. And then you use your real estate agent to help you find a property. Most likely you're going to be using video tours when the properties come up because that's really going to be your, your best method of uh find the property right now. Absolutely. Um, and so, as Abraham said, a lot of our buyers and clients who move into the area are going to kind of be in that middle price point. Um, so if you're PCS in the area, I'm sure you've already done a little research into it. But if you haven't, I'm going to go ahead and share with you the BAH for, um, I'm going to just give you a couple examples. So for E5 without dependents this year, you're looking at uh, $2,175 for your BAH. And with dependents, you're looking at $2,388. Now, for 05, you're looking at without dependents, 2961, and with dependents, 3726. And the reason we bring up the BAH, of course, it's higher in Northern Virginia than it is or in the greater Washington area um, than it is throughout a lot of the country. Um, and you're probably used to your BAH covering more than just your mortgage or rent. Um, and that is an adjustment for a lot of people when they relocate here is that if you're looking even in the average price points here, your BAH more than likely may only cover your housing costs. It's not going to cover your utilities. Um, so that's a bit of an adjustment for some people. And so for the purpose of today's video, we're going to show you examples of properties and communities um, that using your total BAH of an 05, what does that look like price range wise? And, you know, with the there are some factors that vary, including property taxes, interest rate, HOA fees, things like that. But the basic gist of it is using the 05, you can probably find something in the 600 to 625 range, which is kind of smack dab in the middle of most of these communities. That's true. That's true. And, and one, one more thing to consider when we're talking about some of these properties, a lot of the homes in Northern Virginia area, they come with HOAs. Mm -hmm. So you have to get used to 
living in HOA, yes, there are some communities that do not have HOAs, um, but you're competing against other people who want that same product. So, so we just have to be mindful of the competition in the market. We have to be mindful of what type of inventory this particular geographic area uh, provides you. Mm -hmm. I think that you'll be fine, right? I mean, it's a uh, it's a series of what is it? What's the term? It's trade offs, right? It's a series of trade offs when you move to this area. Um, a lot of our housing stock, especially in your price ranges, are going to be if you're close to the base, are going to be townhouses most likely. A townhouse living is different than single family living, especially. Uh, I think that a lot of the military bases around the country are not in high cost of living areas. So you you may be already accustomed to having a two car garage, having grass <laughs> over the front in the back of your property. You, you just gonna have to shift that adjustment a little bit uh, when you move into the Northern Virginia area. Yeah, so that's actually another thing that's a big adjustment for people is the townhomes, um, specifically closer to the base and the neighborhoods that we're going to show you that are closest to the base. You're primarily going to see townhomes. Matter of fact, in that price range, that $600,000 price range, those are the example properties that I pulled, um, just because you're more than likely to find uh, townhouses in a townhouse, in case you don't know, is a house that shares walls with your neighbors. Um, you know, it's common for us here and to us it's second nature um, because we live in a townhome and we're used to it but it is a bit of a so shock for some people matter of fact we've had people reach out to us and they didn't even know what a townhouse was it's, true. Uh, it's, not, it's not a common product all throughout the country so, mm -hmm. so it's just something you have to get used to and also you'll find that most people don't use their backyards really and when you get into a townhouse you'll be like you know this is a perfect amount of space yeah i mean it's tall Right. So most of our homes are three levels. So we have um, pretty much every property you see is going to have a, a basement level and then, you know, one or two levels above that. So get used to hiking upstairs. That's just a part of get a few extra steps. in if you're a Fitbit wearer, um, just get used to the idea of going up and down stairs. Your house is going to be tall rather than necessarily wide. That's true. That's true. Excellent. So let's clear out the comment section. So what we work here is. We, we have some, we have like a prepared conversation we're having with you about a topic, the topic is BCS and the Fort Melbourne. And then uh, in between the different segments, we'll clear out the comments. So if you have any comments or if you have any questions that you want answered in real time, ask them in the comments uh, section. We'll, we'll get to those after we finish our prepared section and uh, have a little conversation with you. So let's see. You have gaming. Thanks so much for watching. You have gaming, one of our regular viewers. Mm -hmm. Where's this place exactly? Uh, it's right next to Wharton, um, and it's south of Alexandria, Fairfax County. So if you're taking uh, Route One, um, I can show you on the map. If you're taking Route One, which is going to be uh, also called Richmond Highway, um, Richmond Highway runs straight through the uh, Fort Belvoir area. So, so that's where uh, Fort Belfort is. Uh, Woodbridge is right here to the uh, southwest of uh, Fort Belfort. And then you also have immediately to the south of uh, Fort Belfort is the Lord area. So that's that's where it is. It's uh, like Crystal mentioned, the southeastern part of, of Fairfax County with this entire region here uh, being Fairfax County. Excellent question. All right. Anthony, come somebody from my childhood. Uh, Proud to grow. Uh, Y'all keep the good info coming. We'll do. Coming. We'll do. Um, we grew up together, church together, in New Orleans. New Orleans. All right. So, so let's go. Let's start talking a little bit about the um, the actual basic. We just have a little bit of trivia knowledge. So. Mm -hmm. I thought that you were going to get into it. Okay, so I, my apologies. Uh, all right, so this is actually one of, or actually it is the largest uh, employer in Fairfax County. So you're going to see here at Fort Belvoir, there are nine Army commands, eight Army Reserve and National Guard elements, 16 uh, DA agencies, and then nine DOD uh, agencies. In addition to that, there's also going to be... Uh, 
There's also going to be the um, Department of Treasury office here, as well as a detachment for an attachment for the Marines, Navy, and Air Force. So overall, just a lot of people working at Fort Belvoir. It's more than twice as many people um, that are employed at the Pentagon. And so because of that, we want to make sure we show you some of the different options that are available as far as housing. Before we move on to housing, though, we're going to talk a little bit about the gates uh, to Fort Belvoir because Fort Belvoir is made of three main sections. So you're going to have the main base, which is Davidson Army Airfield, and then also Fort Belvoir North, which is on the map. You can see there are several gates to Fort Belvoir. And at the moment, three of those gates are closed. They have been closed since the beginning of uh, the coronavirus, and they still haven't opened back up yet. And those gates are going to be um, Telegraph, Walker, and Lieber. And just a quick note about uh, Tully Gate. A lot of people tend to try to avoid it because that is the only gate that non-DOD um, ID card members and commercial vehicles can go through. So overall, a lot of people try to avoid that gate if they can just to, you know, avoid lines and hiccups. Okay, so that is your, that's your facts about the, the Port Belvoir area. We kind of already talked about the location, uh, but I just want to bring that map up one more time to kind of give you some specifics. Uh, Fort Belvoir is 22 miles southwest of the White House. It's 19 miles to the north of the Pentagon and 24 miles to the south of Quantico. And so Quantico is going to be down yonder in this little region uh, right here in the Woodbridge Dump 3, well, Prince William County Dump 3 uh, area. And also you can show them where the mixing bowl is to show them how convenient the interstate is, oh, yes. too. Okay. So this little um, contraption right here uh, is what we call the mixing bowl. It is the largest collection of interstate I've ever seen in my life, but it does allow you to get to both the... Um, 495, 395, and uh, 95, which if you'll notice, uh, just some more trivia for you when you move to the area, this road right here, 95, 495, uh, this circle right here, this is called the Beltway. And so when people are talking about the, the Beltway, this is what they're referring to. I don't know why it doesn't look like a belt, but <laughs> um, that's just what they're in. When they're talking about the inside the beltway they're talking about this interior area right here mm -hmm. outside the beltway it's outside of this particular area here now we'll say that the prices inside the beltway are usually more expensive than outside the beltway ex except for select areas where there's either lower rated public schools or housing type that that isn't ideal for individuals so so that that's essentially where you're um where you're at. Mm -hmm. There's also two airports, two international airports. That's another thing that's cool about living in this area. You'll be able to get to whatever destinations you want to get to um, in a timely manner. So we have a smaller airport right here called National uh, Reagan. Um, that's going to be right over here next to the Crystal City area. So this is Crystal City or National Landing, as the uh, Amazonians would like us to call it. And then you have the Pentagon right over here, right? Mm -hmm. And then the next airport that you would uh, use is called Dallas International Airport. This is a much larger airport. You probably will be using Dallas uh, International Airport just because there's more flights out of this area so that you can even go back home, visit your family, or have guests come in uh, to uh, the region uh, to come visit. Now, I will say this. One thing that's cool about living here is that a lot of your, a lot of your friends uh, are or um, people from back home, they're going to want to come and visit you because this is a vacation destination, right? Um, in addition to having the museums that are in the D.C. area, um, if you go to the beginning of this video on the replay, you'll see that we're, we're doing walking tours of different hiking trails. There's a lot of history uh, in this particular area. We have great restaurants in the, the Washington, D.C. area. Or Washington, D.C. proper. Mm -hmm. We have some cool restaurants outside of Washington, D.C., um, but yeah, so this is a, a great place to visit. You'll notice that every time you're getting on the plane to leave here, people are coming here <laughs> with this uh, cheer and glee on their faces because they've made it to uh, the nation's capital. So that's another cool thing about the location. Uh, do you want to say anything else about the Location. Just really quickly, I was going to point out that actually all of the places we're going to show you today as far as uh, neighborhoods are going to be outside the Beltway. 
Um, so keep that in mind, as Abraham said, more of the high cost of living areas are going to be with inside uh, inside the Beltway. And for the purpose of our video, just because of proximity of Fort Belvoir, we won't be talking about any neighborhoods inside the Beltway. Gotcha. Gotcha. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, let, let's clear out the comment section before we go to our next uh, section. Okay, we have the bots in. Hey, mm -hmm. Frank State Staten, thank you so much, I Robot. We mm -hmm. appreciate you. you That's uh, another repeat uh, viewer. That is. <laughs> right. Also, we have this person, so they must have came together as a duo. We hope mm -hmm. that you enjoy your stay in the area. Um, okay, so let's get, let's get back to... Um, we're actually moving on to Kingstown now. So we're going to talk about our first neighborhood. First neighborhood on our list is going to be Kingstown, which is located in the Alexandria, Fairfax County uh, part of Northern Virginia. Um, so Kingstown is going to be the closest to our uh, closest to Fort Belvoir as far as distance. You're only two and a half miles uh, to the nearest gate when you're visiting, when you're living in Kingstown. Um, so depending on what part, uh, what gate you're going to, your commute could be a little bit longer. It could be 15 to 25 minutes, depending on the gate. Uh, Kingstown is going to be the second largest planned community in Fairfax County. So there are a lot of homes, a lot of housing options. Um, within Kingstown, uh, all three types, and whenever we say all three types of uh, homes, we're always talking about condos, townhouses, and single family homes. So Kingstown offers all three of these types of properties. Uh, your condos are going to start in the low threes. And then townhomes, you can expect to pay anywhere from $475 or $450 up to 775 for a townhouse in Kingstown. Now that's that uh, 775 sale actually happened a few months ago, and that was a two car garage, larger townhouse, completely updated. Um, but you can expect to spend over well over 600,000, well over that average price uh, for a townhome. And then we also have single family homes in Kingstown in the greater Kingstown area. And those actually start on a low end, probably somewhere around the high fives, around 580. And those can go up to over $1 million. That's true. So on the map right here, we're looking at the Kingstown area. Uh, just so you can know, Kingstown has two, essentially two names that the names used in two different ways. Locals use the Kingstown, uh, the Kingstown name to really talk about the 22315 zip code, whereas there's also a Kingstown HOA or community that consists of 5,500 homes, right? And mm -hmm. so what we're referencing right now is really more or less the Kingstown HOA, but the prices are pretty similar throughout the community. You're just not going to find rather large uh, townhouses outside of the king center area you'll find a larger collection of them mm -hmm. and you'll you'll most likely be talking about kingstown proper which is the kingstown enjoy it we live in kingstown so we are biased to mm -hmm. live in this uh, community we would love to have you as a, a neighbor uh and uh, we live right over here in the south part of kingstown kingstown is divided into what is called villages so they have south village this middle part right here is called middle village and then we have kingstown north up here uh, Kingstown North was developed last uh, in the community. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that's cool about living in Kingstown is what we have two fitness centers. So we have a fitness center right here, which is called the Thompson Center uh, in the Kingstown South area or the South Village. And then we have the Van Dorn uh, Center right over here, or the Snyder uh, Fitness Center right over here in the the north part of the Kingston area. Now, if you scroll down to Hayfield Farm, that is a neighborhood. It's not part. It's part of the greater Kingstown area in the 22315 zip code. Now, Hayfield Farm is a collection of older single family homes that is particularly popular with our military personnel. Um, it is an area within Kingstown, within that same uh, average price point that you pay in Kingstown. But in this area, you're going to get larger single family homes or not necessarily larger single family homes. Excuse me. Single family homes on larger lots. Um, and so that it's actually quite popular. There are not a whole bunch of transactions, um, but we do see a lot of folks within the military that gravitate to this neighborhood if they want to be in a greater Kingstown area. That's true. I, I would say that a lot of people like this um, Hayfield Farm area because their HOA is less restrictive. So you can kind of do what you like to do uh, with the property. Also, they have the, the elementary and the secondary school within walking distance from mm -hmm. your home. So it allows you to have a really close relationship with your neighbors your your kid if you're moving in with kids your your kids will really enjoy living in the hayfield farm area 
because all their friends from school live uh, in the same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Now, we, I'm going to show you an example of a townhouse uh, here in the Greater Kingstown area that sold a few months ago for 610. So as I said, we're going to try and stay between that 600, 625 price range, uh, because again, that at a 05, that's pretty much going to use your entire um, a BAH allowance. Oh, so this is a townhouse so. It is. Excellent. So this is in Kingstown, the northern part of the Kingstown, uh, North, North Village. Village. Um, this is off of Van Dorn uh, Street, so you have quick access to the Van Dorn uh, Metro. This is going to be a typical layout for a Kingstown townhouse, which is going to be the main living area is on the middle level. Um, we call the basement the, the crown level space, but if you notice from this photo here, the basement isn't um, necessarily underground. So mm -hmm. the basement is usually just this this bottom floor here. Uh, and so that's something else you have to get used to is that we, we when you're looking for something with the basement, you're just looking for something with the bottom floor. Yes, exactly. Like more often than not, your bottom floor will be a walkout. Now we do have some walk up basements, even some basements that don't have outside access. But overall, for the most part, you're going to find walkout basements. That's true. And just if you're not used to uh, living in a townhouse, the the main concept of it is that it's it's thin, right? It's like it's a skinnier living uh, situation. You usually have stairs uh, like this uh, particular unit that's going to be on the uh, one side of the of the townhouse, and then you'll have your living space um, to the other side, right? And and so it it does restrict you as far as like what type of furniture you can have. It does restrict you as far as how many. Um, as you can see, this this is an interior unit, so there's no windows on the um, the walls that are shared with the townhouse. This is just townhouse living. Uh, mm -hmm. It's easy to get used to, right? So 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 have an open mind, have an open mind when you're moving here. But this is a a property in Kingstown. Okay, so the next place we're going to move on to is going to be Lorton. Uh, Lorton is south of the uh, Fort Belvoir, um, immediately south mm -hmm. to it. And so let's just pull up on the map here. Um, so we have Fort Belvoir right here uh, to the to the east uh, of Lorton. And Lorton, what, what's nice about Lorton is that you're still in Fairfax County uh, public school system. And so I think a lot of people are, before you make that leap to Prince William County, they're trying. They're usually trying their best or their hardest to stay in Fairfax County. And Lorton has some of the lower prices in the region, while, while also providing you with uh, a quicker commute. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's the it's the furthest south uh, you can go in Fairfax County, um, and it's a great location as far as proximity to Fort Belvoir. It's only six and a half miles from Fort Belvoir. That's true. Oh. Now, I know we, we haven't mentioned this yet, but one of the, the convenient things about living in um, Northern Virginia is the fact that our location, so so the region is large uh, mm -hmm. and you could live comfortably in any part of the region because there is going to be grocery stores near you, there's going to be um, dry cleaners, there's going to be some type of sports for your kids to play uh, you're never far from a park or a trail no matter where you are in northern virginia no matter the county you're never far from outdoor recreation activities so that's the cool thing about living in this area so even though we're going to show you um we're going to progressively move further away from uh fort belvoir when we show you a couple more places um during this this live stream but just keep in mind there's usually grocery stores um there's usually maybe one or two restaurants uh, near the area, and there's always going to be parks all around uh, the, where you're going to live. So, mm -hmm. so you're going to have, I think you're going to have a comfortable existence. Now, you're not going to have any nightlife. None of the places we're showing you. No nightlife. So if you are one of those individuals, maybe you're moving here and you are, are single or you're uh, married and you don't have little to worry about then you'll want to move to the, the northern part of the county um or the northern part of the region mm -hmm. um, and so disregard everything <laughs> and just while well, do you have the map up now or well, I was going to say, Abraham mentioned outdoor activities. You can see just uh, south of Lorton, you have Mason Neck Park, which is a huge, um, which is a huge state park. 
Um, and it's part of, I mean, it's part of the regional park system. But in addition to Mason Neck Park, you also see Pohick Regional Park at the top there. Lots of biking trails. That that whole green area right there is just full of things to do. Yeah. And what's nice about the, the Lorton area is, again, you're, most people are trying to stay away from this part of 95. This little skinny neck right here mm -hmm. uh, on 95, this is where most of the traffic that's entering into the Woodbridge area or the Prince William County area starts um, because the road narrows right here. Um, and it's, it's always, there's always traffic. Always. On the weekends, right? mm -hmm. So if you could deal with what Lorton has to uh, provide you, then, then you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Um, and let's take a look at what you can get in Lorton in that same price point. that i don't know why that didn't no oh, so okay so what we see here is a property that sold um a few months ago at six hundred and ten thousand. so as you can see this is a little bit bigger same price point the same exact closing price as that one we just saw in kingstown you're a little bit further south and you're going to get a slightly larger townhouse so now you're looking at two car garage townhomes at this price point in lorton Yes, and that's just indicative of the area. So the further south you move, the more um, the more bang for your buck you can buy, right? The more mm -hmm. real estate you can get. Mm -hmm. But you also have to deal with the, the commute. Now, the commute for you, for individuals who are, moving, who are PCS and the Fort Belvoir, isn't going to be significant moving to Lorton or even the Woodbridge area because mm -hmm. it's it's a, it's within that 30-minute that commute time frame. So, mm -hmm. so you're not... The prices in uh, Northern Virginia really reflect moving away from the Pentagon or Washington D.C. down. Right? Mm -hmm. So, so that is the I would say that that the higher price properties are going to be around the, the D.C. Pentagon Arlington area, and then we're moving down further south. So that's why we even could start with you know reasonably priced uh, townhouses. Mm -hmm. And again, reasonably priced is here in Fairfax County is six hundred thousand. Uh, but you can see it's just a little bit wider. When you have a two car garage townhouse, naturally the house is going to be just a little bit wider than those, uh, as Abraham said, those thinner townhomes. But you're still going to have that same experience with the stairs on one side of the property, and it's still going to be a, a taller building on three levels. You still haven't get that much yard because we were showing the client some uh, some of these townhouses uh, in Lorton, even in this price range. And um, yard space is uh, hard to come by uh, in this price range. So, mm -hmm. so you just if you have a dog, your dog is also going to get accustomed to living in a smaller space. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so just know that your dog isn't going to complain to you. It's going to deal with the um, deal with the new life that they have. <laughs> Now, next up, we actually are going to move to places going to give you a little bit more yard space. You're going to be just a little further out. We're going to talk about uh, when you head out be about 25 to 40 minutes northwest of the base. And that's going to be looking at like the Springfield and Burke areas. Um, and so that's going to give you a little bit more property. You're going to have more green space, still great access to um, to amenities and entertainment, um, as well as public transportation options. Um, and the interstate, but you're going to be just a little bit further away from the base. Um, Fort Belvoir is going to be about six miles from Springfield and 10 miles from Burke. And home prices there, we're looking at anywhere from 300000 to uh, 2 million. Again, you're going to still see the same, all three types of properties. You're going to see condos, townhouses, and single families. But the condos in these two areas are going to be few and far between. Um, you're definitely going to see a lot more single family and townhouses. That's true. And with the single family homes here, you will you will start to get a yard, right? So mm -hmm. if having a yard is important to you, then you just have to deal with the fact that you're you're adding some time uh, to your commute. And we find that, that a lot of individuals don't mind this particular commute. Uh, even if you are coming from the, the this northwestern part of the um, west, the Springfield area, uh, once you get into Burke, you you do start to get into normal commute times, which Burke is going to be this little uh, center right here. Uh, you do start to get into normal commute times because Burke is wide, so you could be to the western part of Burke, 
which then you're probably looking at 30 to um, 35 minutes uh, for your commute, which is still reasonable. Definitely right? for this area. And you're not necessarily commuting um, with uh, traffic because the, like I mentioned previously, most people are kind of traveling to this part of the region for work, right? This Washington, D.C., Pentagon, Arlington area. Mm -hmm. uh, so your commute to the to Fort Belvoir is going to be more of a, like a reverse commute slightly. Mm -hmm. um, but you're going to find that a lot of people who live in, in Burke are, are, live, are working at uh, Fort Belvoir um, because it is. Like Crystal mentioned, one of the largest employers in the area. All right, now let's take a look at the property we have here in it's in Springfield, and this one recently sold for six twenty two. So already we see significantly more yard space, right? Because it's a single family. Grass. So <laughs> that's called grass. Mm -hmm. I, have, I don't have grass. I, have, I live in a townhouse. Mm -hmm. um, also, I just want to point out that uh, whenever a property starts with the kitchen photos, you always have doubts about like what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. But so this style and we see a lot of homes that look like this in Northern Virginia. Now, one thing I pointed out before is that you're going to see older single family homes in this price range in Fairfax County. Um, and this is kind of similar to the type of single family you will probably see in Lorton at the same time, uh, because I didn't show you guys any single families in Lorton. We just showed you a townhouse. You're probably looking at something in this same style uh, within this price point. Let's take a look at. Also, this is called a split level. So if you notice why the door is off center. I right hear so you're going to walk into this door and you're going to walk up a couple steps to get onto this main level. There's going to be a living uh, space to the right of the property and then it's going to be bedrooms to the uh, left of the property. And then you're going to have some more living space in the basement. Um, probably just one room that's going to be living space and then the other uh, space is going to be a laundry room and a um, maybe two bedrooms. So, mm -hmm. And usually at this price point, you're going to get a carport or maybe a one car garage. Now, big backyard, right? So, I mean, this is significantly more backyard space than you would expect to get elsewhere in Fairfax County in this price point. Because usually to get a yard this size in Fairfax County, you're looking at, you know, two to $300,000 more, if not a million dollars, just because of the yard space. But in Springfield and Burke, I don't know if you would get as much yard space in Lorton, um, but this is just an example of what you can expect in the Springfield Burke area. We want to make sure we show you some single family homes because we know that a lot of people coming into the area are used to having a single family home. And so we just want to show you what the options are. Um, you're going to be a little bit further away than those first two neighborhoods we talked about, um, but still a reasonable commute. And again, this is that same exact price point. Um, so you can kind of decide, well, would I prefer to have a single family home, although it may be a little bit older, I'll get more space and also the bonus for yard space, or do I prefer something that's a little bit newer? Most of those town homes in Kingstown and Lorton, you're talking about homes that were built in the mid to late 90s up to the early 2000s. So you're really kind of trading off on the the age of the property, the size of the property. I just want to point out something I find funny because I'm a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. This is just funny to me. Notice this photo here. This is by a professional photographer or, or, or somebody who knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And then look at this photo. And then look at this photo. Oh, so this is a mix. Yeah, well, I think <laughs> it's a mix. I think the owner most likely told the agent to get this photo because they're probably proud of this. this and also the under cabinet lighting. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that's just a, a real estate uh, content. But what's cool about the, the Springfield area, you are going to start to see more renovations uh, from these properties because these properties are 30, 40, 50 years old. And they're at the end of what people would say is acceptable as, as far as the decor, the, the, uh, the upgrades. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. Uh, if, you, if you do find something in the Springfield area, Springfield Park area, you're probably going to see stainless steel uh, appliances. You may see some flooring updates. The cabinets are probably going to be more or less painted versus uh, new, new mm -hmm. um, just because the price, the demand here is so high for properties that people don't have to do a full renovation to get the most uh, out of their out of their homes. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. So this is a. And so like I mentioned earlier. You have that walk up, so this is called a split level. So you have that walk up from the front door, and then you enter in and to the right. You're gonna have your living space, and then to the left, you have your bedrooms. Just love knowing what I'm talking about. And mm -hmm. uh, let's just show you a couple of those bedrooms. Those bedrooms are gonna be kind of tea tiny. 
Uh, so you, you see, see that? That's just the. That's just what you have to deal with. And again, these are older homes, so we're we're talking about something that was probably built in the '70s, maybe the '80s. But we're looking at older properties, um, and so back then, people didn't live in their bedrooms. So you know, you sleep in your bedroom, so they only have room for you know a bed and maybe a dresser. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, and that kind of leads us to anything else about Springfield or Burke you want to add? No, I don't, I don't have anything else. Okay. Well, it leads us perfectly to the next and final section we're going to talk about, which is the Woodbridge uh, and Dumfries areas. Before we do that, though, let's put out this comment. We have okay. commented. It's a permanent change of stem. Sorry. So EF Gaming said, what is PCS? Uh, PCSing is a permanent change of station for military personnel. So when they leave one post to relocate to another. Yep. Great question for the individuals who are not in the military. Also, for my people who are watching this and you you, you're, you maybe work for the government or you work for the private industry and you don't know all these acronyms, <laughs> just know you don't need to know them. You don't need to know. <laughs> we'll use them around you. Just say, oh, oh okay. You learn them when you live here. You'll learn You'll learn them because you'll have friends. We've had this happen, of course, every single year. We have friends, PCS, in and out of the area all the time. It's something that you get used to. That's true. So now we're going to talk about the uh, Woodbridge Dumfries area. This is actually going to be one of the highest concentrations of um, military cells. So individuals mm -hmm. who are buying in this area, we see a lot of VA uh, buyers, individuals using the VA program to buy properties in this area. I think the, the main reason why is because the uh, Quantico is near Dumfries, and then we have the um, we have Fort Belvoir, which is right on top. So so Woodbridge is sandwiched between two military bases, and also Woodbridge allows you to buy a single family home uh, for you know what is called reasonable. Mm -hmm. uh, in this uh, particular area. So we'll we'll look at Woodbridge on the map here as well. And what Abraham said as far as reasonable, absolutely. Um, it's Woodbridge allows you to get significantly more property uh, than you would pretty much anywhere in Fairfax County. That's true, but it's not the same county though. That's it's not. It's and we're going to, we'll talk about, yeah. So if you're now, if you're looking in Prince William County, are you looking at Woodbridge or Dumfries? You're now in Prince William County. Yes, this is Prince William County. Uh, Prince William County notably has a lower rated public schools so most people in uh most people when they're deciding between woodbridge or prince william county and fairfax county or arlington county or even loudon county they use the the first thing they use is distance right distance to work or, or uh, the length of their commute the next thing they're using is the ratings of the schools because we do have a large uh collection of individuals who move here with littles mm -hmm. right there you have kids and so now that you're moving into the Prince William County you're going to have to again you have a trade-off between higher rated public schools mm -hmm. but then you have more more square footage right more house absolutely yard space mm -hmm. newer properties new new construction mm -hmm. um, so it's just a trade-off absolutely um and that was actually the point i was making when i was transitioning from springfield to woodbridge is you're still going to get a single family home you're still going to get a large lot but now you're going to get something newer and more than likely completely renovated in that same price point but let's take a look at where woodbridge and woodbridge is actually this whole uh area here not just where it's highlighted so you see where it says on the mac map lake ridge and dale city all of that is woodbridge that's true and then uh, Dumfries is all of this part uh, back here on the back end, mm -hmm. the back side of the Prince William County kind of area. So, so the further down you go, the of course you, you just have to deal with 95. 95 mm -hmm. is um, is is known to have horrible traffic. Mm -hmm. People hate 95 in general. And the further you move south from the Fort Belvoir area, the more you just have to deal with 95 traffic. Now you also have the option to go up Route One. If you're coming from uh, if you're coming from down south, um, so if you are in Dumfries or Woodbridge, if you're lucky enough to live not very far from Route One, you can also just take Route One straight up. That's true, and there's a lot of new construction on this uh, Route One side of the Woodbridge area, our first one kind of area. So you could find uh, newer properties, either Potomac Shores or Eagle Point. Mm -hmm. Eagles, Eagles Point. Eagles Point. Mm -hmm. um, so, so those, those places have uh, properties from six hundred to seven hundred thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. um, and up. Yeah. Single family. Now we're actually going to take a look at a property in Eagles Point. That's where we're going to look at our um, six hundred 
thousand dollar price point. But before we go to the property, I just want to note that look at the distance you have to travel to not get to DC. Mm -hmm. um, if you're living in the Prince William County area, you will not have the same DC experience mm -hmm. as individuals that live further north. So you're probably not going to DC proper very often. Um, but it's you know it's only a 45 minutes to an hour to get there. Even on the weekends, even on the weekends, you're still we still have weekend trips. Yeah. So, it, but I, I find that most people don't go to DC anyway. Exactly. I was going to say that most people like we really love DC, so we try and go as often as we can. But most people don't go to DC maybe more than once or twice a year anyway. Um, and so, what's an hour long trip, a forty five minute drive, once or twice a year? Um, but also, most people tend to spend their recreational time in their neighborhoods. We find that you'll find places to shop near your home. You'll get most of your entertainment within your home. And then also anywhere in North Virginia, if you're into outdoor activities or even in, if you're in not even necessarily outdoor activities, because we have so many subdivisions in these bedroom communities, there's lots of activities. If you're interested in going to the movies, you're not going to be far from movie theater no matter where you live. If you want to go and do putt-putt golf, you can find that. If you want to go, only you can't find is skating. That's the only thing we can't find. <laughs> people here don't skate not like regular skate you can find ice skating here it's just like regular skating that you can't find yeah. um, another thing too I want to point out before we um, go into the property itself in Woodbridge you have the Potomac Mills uh, shopping center which is in an outlet mall that also has your Costco there's an Ikea uh, over there as well and then we also have um, a Call that a Wegmans uh, mm -hmm. this area too. So, so you do have, you know, now if you know Wegmans is over here off of 95, so if you live towards the western part of town, you do have to, you have a little ways to travel, mm -hmm. but it is close ish mm -hmm. uh, to you. So this is a property in the uh, Woodbridge area. So yeah, so this is in Eagles Point, and it sold for 620. Um, and so this is a newer construction. This home was built in 2016. Right, so you're going to get something a little bit newer, in for that same price as what we saw for a home that's you know 30 or 40 years old in Springfield. Also, what's funny about these? Because uh, we live in Kingstown, so our houses are smaller. Mm -hmm. This looks like two townhouses. Two house, townhouses right next to each other. <laughs> Those are really tall. Um, there, yes, this particular subdivision, that's the way the homes are built. So they look like just really massive townhouses. All right, so you can see open floor plan, which is again what you see in more in newer homes. So a lot of the homes that you're going to see maybe in Springfield and Burke won't be as open in those older neighborhoods, but you can see speakers here. Mm -hmm. the built in speakers, so you're going to get like some modern amenities. Mm -hmm. In Kingstown, we have to turn our radio on. <laughs> But let's look at the kitchen here. The kitchen is right off the, the yeah. right off the family room. Open layout right here as well. And so you see it is an eating kitchen. So there is, you know, a little dining space here in addition to the seating area off the off the um the island. So again, just you're gonna get a lot more space. Um you're gonna have a nice size yard. Um this this subdivision isn't known for having huge yards. Um, but a nice size yard and a huge house, newer house, completely updated for the same prices which you would pay for an older home or a town home in Fairfax County. That's true. That's true. I actually showed this property, um, and it was it was nicely uh, renovated, mm -hmm. nicely uh, the, the decorations that they, they have, yeah it was staged well. It was staged well. Mm -hmm. Also, the, um, the kitchen was just sick. The kitchen, our kitchens are so small there. Mm -hmm. um, so if you really want some, you know, some space to burn stuff, this is it. Look at this—a two, a double oven. Double oven. Look at that. I, I didn't know what that word for it was. I'm not used to. Uh, yeah. So, so this is, this is what you get in the Woodbridge Dumfries area. I think. Yes. Um, yeah. So, so lastly, um, let's just talk about schools a little bit. Mm -hmm. So. Northern Virginia as a whole, 
is known for its public schools, highly rated public schools throughout Northern Virginia. Fairfax County has some really highly rated ones. Prince William County does as well. They're not in the two areas that we mentioned, um, but within Fairfax County, specifically in Springfield and Burke, there are going to be three of the top rated uh, high schools in the state of Virginia. That's going to be um, Lake Braddock, Robinson, and West Springfield High. Those three high schools are rated number 9, 10, and 11 in the state of Virginia. That's true. According to U.S. News. So you're going to get a good public school experience uh, in, in living in Northern Virginia. I think that that's what a lot of the, um, the officers that move to the area really like is that they, because usually officers have a higher BAH. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes you'll see that officers in other markets will live in um, a, a community where maybe they may be at a, a private school mm -hmm. or the school itself. They have to move so far away to get into a good public school, whereas here, you know, right down the street, relatively short from you, you can get your kids into a great public school experience. Another thing too, since we're talking about schools, not necessarily related, is that, that in Northern Virginia, because it is a high cost of living area and individuals here make a lot of money, your kids are going to be able to find every sport imaginable Every extracurricular activity imaginable, not just the sports. Like there, um, there are team. If, as far as our schools, there are teams for everything. As far as high schools go, now we don't see that in the lower levels. You're going to have to do private clubs. So if your kids are in elementary or middle school, then you would definitely have to look into some private clubs. But even that is widely available. If your kids are interested in baseball, we have little league and pioneer league. Um, if they're interested in ice hockey, there are several places to play. Um, if you the girls are into cheer, dance, if your kids are into track and field, whatever the whatever it is, there's an opportunity to do, sir. Boys cheer too. Remember Joe? That oh your friend Joe was a cheerleader was a cheer in college. Yeah. In college. He, Boys can cheer abso absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And girls can play little league. There were plenty of girls on the little league teams uh <laughs> when Abraham the second played baseball. Yes. Yes. On that note, <laughs> uh, I think it's a great place to end. Uh, thank you so much for watching today's show. This is a PCSing to Fort Belvoir on Wednesday. We're going to be talking about Quantico, PCS and Quantico on Friday. We're going to wrap this series up with talking about PCSing to Pentagon, the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. is it, called the Pentagon? it is called the Pentagon. I was about to correct you, but you got it. <laughs> uh, if you are ready to make that next leap, right? So you're PCSing to Fort Belvoir, one of these other military bases and you know you moved to the area you got your orders there is a link in the description uh to our perfect home questionnaire uh you fill out that link and we will schedule a time to meet with you via zoom to discuss all of your real estate needs we'll answer any questions you have about the area we'll also help you kind of to narrow down what part of the region um you want to stay in based on your needs and that link is in the description my name is Abraham Walker. I don't think you said what our names are. Oh, no. Well, I'm Crystal Walker. Crystal, my wife. Uh, and business partner. And business partner. Um, <laughs> watching from, oh, there we go. Oh, what's that for you? Um, thank you so much for watching, Charlotte's Bill. And thank you for watching again. She actually watched Friday's oh, yeah. show. She's PCSing. She's PCSing PCS a Belvoir, I think you said. Yes, I remember that. Yes, hmm. yeah. So there's that link in the description to the Perfect Dome Questionnaire. Fill it out. And uh, if you have any ideas, uh, as far as like content ideas for us, there was, you know, we're, we're at the back end of the show, so we mm -hmm. can do a little chatting. Um, so if you have any piece, uh, any ideas as far as content, we had a, a client who's relocated to the area um, that is buying new construction. So we've actually been doing some new construction content mm -hmm. because there's so many questions I noticed that just were not uh, uh, available online mm -hmm. right and so if you know anything you would like us to answer we, we do the research and put together a video uh okay Pretty sorry cool. it was homeschool no worries no worries excellent we homeschool as well oh, we do we do virtual school but i actually used to homeschool before i switched the boys to virtual school i used to homeschool my oldest son that's true that's true um so your pcs said in july excellent congratulations you're gonna love it here it's a great place we you love it a lot more to do than charlotte <laughs> uh, if, if, if you're enjoying your stay in charlotte you you're gonna love, love it here um, also if you're doing homeschooling again there's so much history there's the museum you'll be able to go to that's true 
when uh when I used to homeschool Abraham, I had a group um, and we would meet up to do homeschool field trips. This was of course before everything shut down, but we would meet up to do homeschool field trips. Also, there's a large homeschool community in this area. Mm -hmm. Homeschooling is quite popular. We usually see people do the homeschooling up to ninth grade or mm -hmm. up to eighth grade, and then they, they put their kids into the um, public school for absolutely twelfth grade. I was actually one of those parents who transitioned in seventh grade. So once uh, our son finished sixth grade, we sent him back to the school for seventh. Um, since we have y'all here, what do y'all think about this content? You know, we, we recently switched to these live streams Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, I've been I've been enjoying them. Uh, they, they are quite challenging to execute uh, because we went from doing one to two show. scripted videos a week. Yeah, so now we have three. Uh, videos uh, coming up. What do you think about this uh, frequency? The one of the reasons why we've increased the frequency is because we've noticed that most of you are really not watching for several months. Mm -hmm. It's like you you have you have a question, you get that question answered. You're then, ready to make a move, yeah. So I think I don't think that this type of channel is that entertaining is more educational and so once you get your education it's almost like school right like once you get your education you leave mm -hmm. you know you don't go take classes on the weekend just for fun mm -mm. Um, although we hope you'll continue to watch if you're you know, up until your move yeah. but we do know that a lot of people um they get what they're looking for i'm pcs in a fort belvoir right. what do i need to know what, neighborhood? what neighborhoods great thank you mm -hmm. now we are going to be bringing a little bit once once the um once the weather gets a little bit better, because right now it is, there's like this snow, ice, slurry mix on the ground. Once the weather gets a little bit better, we'll go back to some of our hiking uh, videos as well. Mm -hmm. We'll also, because of the panorama, we haven't been going to the museums. I've been wanting to get into the museums and do like walking tours in the museum. Um, so so that, that kind of content is coming as uh, well. But yeah, let us know what you think about the content. We, we always like to hear your feedback how we can improve uh, the show. As you can see, we have a little bit of background music for you. Hopefully that- That, uh, that keeps you entertained while we're, while we're moving about and moving from topic to topic and working all these different screens. That's true, yeah. So uh, we, we have one of our viewers uh, mentioned that Crystal looks <laughs> And that's because there's, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> You just see us. I'm looking at so many different screens. Four or five different screens right here. There's three cameras. It, it's a lot going on. Yeah. I, I, um, I want to say, I think if you, when we go back to this, you'll see I did a, there's a marked difference. I was, for the most part, I stayed on. I do. I, I stayed on my mark today. I was mindful of his comment. Gotcha. Gotcha. Excellent. comment here. <laughs> uh, we've been so far been binging the older content in the evenings. Yeah, that's what we're noticing. We're, we're noticing that people are binging the content. So mm -hmm. you can't really, you know, we want to answer your questions uh, in a timely manner. And we've also noticed that our, our uh, competitors, right, the other YouTube channels that are out there, I don't like their content. I just don't like the content. Now, not to say that I'm biased, I just don't feel like it's, it's complete, mm -hmm. right? And so one thing that's, I guess, unique about me is I'm obsessive. Uh, about things and I, I would like to make a complete series right so like even like this week this is we're pcsing to all of the bases in mm -hmm. one week so now that means that no matter where you're coming into the channel we have content to serve you absolutely and that's also why if you, you may notice that we started focusing more on the different parts of northern virginia initially we were doing a lot of fairfax content and it's not because we don't work in other parts of northern virginia it's because our initial focus was well we're going to get all the fairfax content out Right. And then we'll get all the Arlington content out and then we'll move to Prince William and we'll get to Loudoun. And we we change that because we want to make sure we're getting the content to everyone, because a lot of people may not be moving to Fairfax County. And we don't want them to think that we don't have information for them or that we don't work in those areas. So we hope that by breaking things up, covering things over these three days, we'll be able to give you a, a complete picture of what's available in North Virginia. Because if you're moving to the area, you may be deciding between these different areas. Um, if we could do five days a week, we do all five parts. We'll be doing five days a week. But we're not there yet. Um, because it's not that I want to sleep. It's that this is not my, this is a part of my job. I also manage our clients and their contracts and all of that. So I don't have time to do five days a week yet. That's true. That's true. Yeah, 
yeah, so, but yeah, we will be five days so we can cover the entire region, plus start talking about D.C. proper as well. Uh, Bridgar says, uh, oh no, I'll have plenty of questions uh, beyond houses, which we're still, I'll be asking you what church, salon, or stuff. Yeah, actually, yeah. Excellent. We know a lot uh, about this place. Uh, also, I, I like to, we're research people. Mm -hmm. um, we also are uh, very particular. Like, we're very particular. Yes, uh, we are. As you can see from our food videos, I kid you not, we have more food videos. We have more restaurants that we actually shot, filmed, edited, but but the food wasn't good. And so we, I just didn't feel good about putting the content out there. So, yeah. So so if you notice, even in the series, it says that we went to seven or eight restaurants. We went to eight we over have, the like, course of the summer. We only have, like, three or four videos up because I just... I don't feel, I, I want to make sure that if I put my name on it, right, that you feel comfortable and confident with the recommendation. with the recommendation and some of the places were okay um but we would never put a restaurant on our channel the, and not say something we would never want to harm a small business so we would never put a negative opinion out there don't go to manassas Battlefield Park. Battlefield Park. That was the yes. That was our least favorite of all the hikes on our channel. That was our least favorite. Um, about that. Yeah, it just wasn't. No content about that. That says this place is boring. There's not much to do. It wasn't as beautiful. It was. It was really hilly. Yeah, but it's not like it's not. It wasn't picturesque. Like it wasn't beautiful. Like Great Falls is like breathtaking. Scott's Run Preserve. Like that was like a huge surprise. How beautiful that park was. Um, and Manassas Battlefield Park. For that drive from our house, which was almost like an hour, yeah. it was definitely, we could have went to Shenandoah for like 10 more minutes a drive. We're like for an hour and 10, we could have went to the mountains. <laughs> uh, I still would have preferred it. Yeah, but it's, it's just the best very good. So on this channel, we're going to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. We're going to give you our honest opinion. And uh, we appreciate all the people who have been reaching out. With, uh, more people have been reaching out lately. Uh, so we do appreciate that. That encourages us to keep this content coming. Mm -hmm. And again, if you have any suggestions for us, anything that you like us, us to talk about on the channel, um, let us know. Uh, you can either comment or you can shoot us an email. There's an email down below. Uh, in this little ticker here mm -hmm. and we enjoy your feedback that's it for today's show um thanks again for all our viewers thanks again for the comments and we will see you on the next episode peace, peace.